Hi, I'm Gary Baca. This man right here, I don't know if you recognize him, but let me tell you who he is. He is a legendary Tito Puente. Tito Puente has been in the music industry for many, many years. I don't want to tell you how many years, you know, mm -hmm. Tito. El Rey, the legendary Mambo King. We're sitting here with Tito Puente once again. P Tito, thank you for uh, being a part of this. Thank you. But thank uh, you. for all thank the you. young people who are not familiar with you, you know, there's probably a lot of youngsters who maybe heard of the name but not familiar with the legendary uh, Tito Puente. Can you tell me a little bit about yourself, where you came from, New York, and well, some of the early days? Uh, first of all, the young people, if, that is, if they're not into me, they're into nothing. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. You heard it, right? Because their parents are supposed to tell them about me already. That's and right. a very young following. I started a long, long time ago. You weren't even around when I started <laughs> coming here to Richmond. And that's a, for 20 years I've been coming around here, playing the mambo music, our Latin music. We're taking it around the world, and they were giving, getting a lot of recognition now. Of course, I've, a lot of people have heard of, of me, but they haven't seen me or heard me playing in person. So anyway, kids, uh, get the records and listen <laughs> and, and ask your parents about me. They know who I am. That's right. As a matter of fact, your son was his name, uh, Richie Puentes, was in that group Foxy, wasn't he? Yes, he was. That's yes. right. They had a song well, called Get Off. That was a yeah, disco hit. Yeah, well, I have my son Tito Puente Jr. in the Latin crew now. Yeah, he, he's a rapper. He's a rapper? Yeah, man. He recites the tunes. <laughs> there you he's go. In Frisco now this weekend. He's with uh, EMI, big company. He's number 38 on the charts now. That's right. Real sharp. You ever plan to maybe uh, incorporate rap inside the Tito Puente uh, sound? Or? I'll oh. retire. I'll <laughs> retire. Yeah. I'm celebrating July 1st, uh, 1996, my 50th year as a musician. Yeah. And Congratulations. I'm gonna celebrate, thank you. I'm going to celebrate it a whole year long now. I have my scholarship fund for young people. I'm going to have my 18th year now coming up. I'm recording my 107th album now. And uh, I just yes. keep going, that's all. 107th album, man. I mean, right. that is a truly an accomplishment. Thank you, thank you. And yeah. um, can you tell me back in the early days, I mean, what was the reception like when you went to clubs and you were performing, you know, your Latin jazz? Did they first shine you on back in, let's say, the 20s and 30s? Did they, you know, want to uh, include Latin music in their club? Or did you get a lot of people that just were not into it? I mean, how did it just all break? Well, you mean years ago when yeah, I, when years I was playing? Ago when, oh, yeah, But sure. it wasn't that really accepted, you know? No, it wasn't now. Uh, the music is getting more recognition now than it used to do years ago. Years ago, even out here, it was very difficult to have a band and clubs and all that. Right. We were always like relief bands and all that, you know. And uh, now uh, we have uh, concerts, jazz festivals, a lot of recordings. Uh, so we've grown a lot quite, uh, the Latin industry, very important. You know, you, uh, you have a song that you wrote called Oye Como Va, which was a giant hit for, you know, Carlos Santana right. and is probably one of his biggest. Do you remember coming up with that song, Oye Como Va? Do you remember what you were doing at that time? Or? Nah, well, I was uh, playing at the Palladium Ballroom. Palladium was uh, the home of the Mambo in New York City. Uh, no ethnic groups in them days. It was beautiful, wonderful music. And uh, we were playing that tune there at the time. Then Carlos recorded it about 12 and a half years after that. And they did a natural, beautiful rendition because you had that rock and roll type of uh, right. rendition. You know, but the organ and the guitar, mm, de -um, de -um, and the drummer, and all that. But it's become a beautiful hit for me. And uh, thanks to him, uh, I was able to get my house. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. And uh, you know, there's also another person that you helped and was associated with you heavily was uh, Dizzy Gillespie. He, uh, Gillespie had this trumpet right in his mouth and jawbones were just like a uh, blowfish, right? Yeah. Can you tell me your association with Dizzy and, and how you guys worked together well, back uh, in those days? Well, uh, he's, uh, he was one of, one of my mentors. Him and uh, Machito, Mario Bowser. They're not here anymore. They all left me alone, man. No, no. They're waiting, you know. Man, but, but uh, Dizzy is the man responsible for this Latin jazz movement. Uh, for, since the 40s, when he had Chano Pozo, he did Manteca, Tintindeo, Nightingale, Tanisha, all those tunes. So I'm, I'm just trying to keep up with his tradition throughout all these years. Mm -hmm. And Tito, I mean, you've been around for like, you know, we, you mentioned how long you've been around. I mean, are we going to be able to hear more music from you? Are you going to be doing maybe studio albums at home and not doing so much touring? Or uh, well, where can we see Tito Puente? Or well, here? I, I'm. I'm uh, up to the year 2000, that's what I want to go to, and go up to the moon. <laughs> I want to be the first Latin band to play on the moon and leave, and leave my tambales up there. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, and yeah, that'll, yeah. Be your, uh, that'll be the resort vacation yeah. spot. I, okay. have a, I have my own uh, restaurant now in New York and City Island. It's a, 
seafood place, real beautiful. And I intend to open about seven of them all around the country, and in Puerto Rico, and Miami, and Chicago, one here in Beverly Hills. And so I'm, they're trying to make a restaurant too out of me. <laughs> I don't know how to wash dishes, and I don't know how to cook. <laughs> I'm still a tambali player. Right, right. Well, you provide the entertainment. Yes, yes. In I New York, do. where can uh, everybody find that in New York? Nowhere. Ain't nothing <laughs> happening in New York. That's why I'm here in Richmond. That's right. Uh, you That's why I'm here. here. If there, there was go. something in New York, uh, I'd be there. <laughs> there you Ain't go. nothing happening. Yeah, open up a franchise. There you go. Yeah. Well, if there's anybody out there who, of course, of course, there's a lot of people influenced. I'm influenced by you. I Thank mean, you. what what uh, advice can you give uh, anyone coming well, up and being in the music industry? That's right. Young people, you, young people are studying the conservatory of music, universities, stay there and study. This is a beautiful profession. It's a good livelihood. And no, no, no to drugs. You hear me? So stay in there. <laughs> yeah. Oh man, and uh, we're talking to the legendary Tito Puente. If you don't know about him, you are probably not aware of anything that happens uh, here in America. Tito Puente is a legendary performer. If you see his name anywhere, if you see his albums, make sure you support him, buy anything thank Tito you. Puente has. And thank Tito, you, I want to thank you for being here once again. Thank you.